Greetings from Romania to my dear family of UPC AG. I want to express the appreciation for our international presiding elder, Thomas Barclay, for the opportunity and for the honor what was given to me to address few words to the family, to our family. And I greet you from seven district of UPC AG. The topic what was given to me, and the, I believe this is the topic for the council, is preparation for generation. I would like for the next few moments and few minutes to speak from Psalm 78. Please, if you have the Bible, open Psalm 78. The title of my message is Lessons from History. Because I was living in a communist country for a number of years, and now we are in democracy, during our life, we learn few lessons. But more to speak from the life, I would like to speak from the Bible. The first lesson, what I learned from Psalm 78, we need to communicate our history to the generations who will come. We need to share our personal history, family history, ministry history, and also the country history, because all are related among themselves. Please read from 78, Psalm 78, verse 1 to 6. I will not read the whole passage, but I will look to verse 6. So the next generation will know them, even the children yet to be born, and they don't will tell their children. Our obligation, we need to tell our children the history. They need to know the history of our family. They need to know the history of the ministry, how the ministry starts. And AG Romania, I need to say, the communists in 1950, they closed the Assemblies of God. And in 4 July, in 1996, God helped us to open again the Assemblies of God. It was a struggle, it was many problems, because the government didn't want to approve the new movement. But God opened the door for us, and now, we have over 100 churches who belong to the district, to the movement, and also 150 workers or pastors. We need to tell to our people, the generation who will come, we need to tell what lesson we have learned from uh, history. And we need to be very open also, secondly, we need to communicate our own deviation. Young people, the, the generation who will come, they need to know even our mistake. In our culture, and if you want to read from 7 to 11, in our culture, it's a shame to talk about the mistake. We need to talk only how proud we are, what accomplished, God help us, and also to talk about the great impact in a nation or in a family, but we are close to talk about the mistake and the deviation. Our future generation, they need to know the mistake, what we made. And I will say in verse 10, and 11. They did not keep God's covenant 
and refused to live by his law. They forgot what he had done, the wonder he had shown them. My dear people, we need to be very open and share our own mistakes because the younger generation or the generation who will come, they, know, they don't need to repeat the mistakes what we did. If we will share with them the mistake and they will see our openness, they will be blessed and they will trust in our integrity. Because we will share with them not only the hills when everything was perfect, We'll talk about the valley, the hardship, the hard time, the conflict, the many, many problems what we are facing during our journey. Number three, lesson from the history, we need to communicate our miracles. And if we look from verse 12 to 16, in especially in verse 12, he did miracles in the sight of their father in the land of Egypt. He divided the sea and let them through. He made the water stand firm like a wall. He guides them with the cloud by day and with the light from the fire all night. He split the rocks in a desert. And they, and gave them water as abundant as they see. He brought stream out of rocky ground and made water flow down like a river. There are so many miracles what God are doing for us and he did for us. And younger generation, the generation who will come, they need to know how we build the churches, how was under the life under the communists, when in every service you had the spy? How was the meeting next day after the service when the secret police will ask you how was the service and tell you all kinds of things, the affirmation what you, what you made? But they need to see how God provide the way for us. How the church was built, how the assemblies of God, how the family survived is miracle how God provides for us. The same God who provides for us and for our forefather is the God who provides for the generation who will come. But we need to share the miracle. How God healed the people. How God provides financial. How God help us to start a school, to start the movement. Can you imagine to start a few years ago with five children 10 years ago and now we have over 800 students in our school from kindergarten to the high school. Can you imagine a few years ago we started the movement with one church and now we have over 100 churches and the number are increasing week by week. How we can hide all this blessing from our future generation? They need to know the miracle because God we serve is the God of miracle, and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Number four, we need to communicate there is a price for sin. It's a little long passage from verse 17 to 38. But in Psalm 78, is saying very clearly. Verse 17, but they continue to sin against him, rebelling in a, against the Most High. Verse 19, they spoke against God, saying, can God spread the table in this in descent? When the Lord heard them, verse 21, he was very angry. His fire broke out against Jacob. Verse 22, 
for they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. God was the one who was listening to them, but they pay a price for this sin. This is, for me, it's a great encouragement. And to tell to the generation who will come, I said, my dear people, my dear generation, you can sin, you can hide from us, you can commit all kinds of sins and be a double mind, have a double life. One life in a church, another life when you leave the church. But I tell you, according to my Bible, according to the word of God, every one of us will pay a price for our sin. You can trick people. We can be smart enough and think, no, no one knows what we are doing. But God, is the one who keeps a record of our deeds. This is what I encourage the future generation to live a clean life, a holy life. The future generation to stay close to God and serve him with the whole heart. And if they will serve him with the whole heart, God will bless them in a special way. I will not read the whole passage, but God is the one who can forgive. And he said in verse 38, he was merciful. He forgave their inquiry and did not destroy them. Time after time, he restrained his anger. God is the one who is calling us to repent to leave the sin and to have a holy life. And if we stay holy and stay close to God, God is the one who will bless us. Number five, the five lesson from the history. We need to communicate the bad experience. Verse 39 to 69. My people, my friends, my comrades, we need to share our bad experience. Maybe we have been betrayed by our brothers. Maybe there was a conflict in a church and was a split in a church because the churches are splitting all over the world. Maybe was the overthrow of the pastor. Maybe in a family was the divorce. Maybe the children was rebellious. Maybe we didn't have enough food. Maybe we put the trust in some people and they was not honest to us. If we communicate even the bad experience, this will show us our openness. This will show us our integrity because we are only human being. We are not angel. We are not falling from heaven. We are on earth. And everyone have a bad experience. From my own bad experience with the people, or with the organization, even with the organization, and we talk about the Christian organization, not another organization. Could be another organization. But what I learned, I need to forgive and to forget. And I need to bless the people. With all this bad experience, because if we will not forgive and not forget, we will just stay wounded. And I say, if I, am, if I have wounds, I can hurt another person. If I am healed, I can heal another person 
to my words and to my prayer. This is what we need to communicate our bad experience, even it's not very pleasant to speak about bad experience. The history is the history. In the Bible, in, in Bible we will find people who have good experience and bad experience. But this experience, even they are good or bad, they are lessons for us. And we need to learn from good experience and also from bad experience. Number six, we need to communicate God's plan. And there are two verses what I really like. Verse 70 to 71. He chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheep pens. From tending the sheep, he brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob of Israel, his inheritance. For me, it's amazing. And this is what we need to communicate. God have a plan for each of us. And we need to stay in God's plan. I believe in God's plan. God, who sent Samuel to the father house, the David, he was not present. He was with the sheep, like the last boy, was not important for the family. But the one who have a plan for David is the same one who have a plan for my life, who took me from the coal mine, from the deep, hundreds, hundreds yards under the ground, working in a coal mine. From them, God took me. The one who cleaned the streets, God called me to Bucharest, to Bible school, appoint me to be the pastor. I was ordained by God's grace. And now God's plan is fulfilled. And not yet because God's plan is bigger than what we sing. This is why I, I have a, a word of encouragement for the younger generation. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what color, if you are white or black or yellow. The GPS, and I said, God GPS, will find you on a field where you are. And God will call you and you will be used by God and serve like a mighty king like David was. God can have a plan for your life. And we need to tell to the future generation, God's plan is not finished with us. God's plan will continue with you. But you need to trust in God. Be ready to come to the Bible school, learn, have someone who, to be a mentor for you. Because I was blessed with the mentors in my life, and I still have a mentors the people who are teaching me. Even I'm 65 years old, I need to learn, and I will not say, oh, I have a doctor degree, I have a master, I have a BA, I have a year of experience. No, 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 no. If you are full of pride, you will not go too far. We need to be humble, recognize our dependency on God, because we depend on God. God is the one who can take us by hand and fulfill his plan for us. Number seven. Another lesson of the history, and I like, we need to communicate the style of leadership. And this is the last verse of Psalm 78, verse 72. And David shepherds them with integrity of the heart, with skillful hands, 
he led him, them. They are too key to have a leadership style, a good leadership style. You know, for me being under dictatorship, Ceausescu was a dictator. Being under the communist, I can make a difference how is the life under dictatorship and how is the life under the God's people. David shepherds them with the integrity of the heart. God is looking to our heart. And Jesus said, we need to have a clean heart. And we need to protect our heart. And if we will have integrity in our heart, the people will see and recognize and said, this man is the man of God. This man is a man of integrity. This man is the man who have the integrity of the heart. You can account, you can follow because of his integrity. You know, there are people who are one man show. Only they preach, only they sing, only they do the things. And that's they appear like to be the actors. God is calling us to have the integrity of the heart, but not to be one man show, but to have a team. And if we have a team, God will bless the ministry and the ministry will be expanded. The second quality to the style of leadership, and he said in verse 22, the second part, with the skillful hands, he led them. It's very important for us to follow the courses or to follow the people who can teach us. We need to learn. And we, we need to develop our own abilities. And he said, when the Bible has said skillful hands, it's God is giving us the wisdom how to work, how to, how to prepare the things, and the people will see our capacity. This is what I, I am against, and I say I am against to the people who don't want to develop. We need to have our own personal development. The society is changed. The country is changed. The world is changed. And from one year to another, we need to adapt. We need to adjust to the new society. Who was thinking years ago about the COVID-19? The COVID-19 took us by surprise, we was not prepared. The churches in Romania was not prepared. The churches was closed. And we need to offer a service online. But there are hundreds and hundreds of churches in Romania. I will not say thousands and thousands. I will say hundreds. But even if I will say uh, thousands, I will not exaggerate. Who, for months and months, they closed the church, they didn't assist the people. They didn't give the communion, the Lord's Supper. The people, I just met last week a pastor who told me, from the beginning on the COVID, who is almost now two years, year and a half, the church, they never took the communion because the pastors, the leaders, was fighting how can distribute the communion because the people need to come to take the communion and was not allowed to come to visit the church. This is why David shepherds them with the integrity of the heart, with skillful hand, he led them. My prayer is to learn to pass this lesson from the history 
to the future generation. And if we'll invest in future generation, God will bless us. If you come to visit our church, Grace Community Church in Bucharest, you will find around me young pastors who will be later senior pastors. Some will pastor here at the Grace, another will plant another churches, but we are investing in a younger generation. If you come to see the movement, you will see the pastor, the young pastor, who are planting churches, who are pastoring churches, because we invest and we give them the authority. I spoke from Psalm 78. The topic was preparation for generation. And my topic for my speech was a lesson from history. First lesson, we need to communicate our history. Second lesson, we need to communicate our own deviation. Lesson number three, we need to communicate our miracles. Lesson number four, we need to communicate there is a price for the sin. Number five, we need to communicate the bad experience. Number six, we need to communicate God's plan. Number seven, we need to communicate the style of leadership. My family, UPCAG, I bless you, all of you, in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.